Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for my final thoughts on um, World at War's Central Pacific campaign. Um, yes, uh, moving, moving on from my previous video where I, I basically finished one turn, um, I'm just going to give you my impressions of the game and uh, really what I like about it, what, I, uh, what might have niggled a tiny bit. Um, there is quite a bit to like in this game, um, although I will temper that by saying there's also a lot to it that doesn't feel quite right. Um, I'll start with the physical components. The rule book is nice, it's compact, it's well laid out, but I'm also going to venture to say that, that although it covers everything and it's clearly written, there are some things in it that I at least find a bit ambiguous. Um, and this is not a fault with the way the rule book is done, but I, I think the the system of this game is is not really a good fit. And I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. But but with the rest of the components, I mean the the map and the tables, they are great, they are functional, they are roomy, everything is clear. Most of the information that you need to play is detailed on the map, which is something I like. I do, I do approve. There's a, there's a good bit of thoughtfulness that went into that. Um, and the, the map's footprint uh, is not that huge. So as, ga as games go, this doesn't take up that much space. Um, also, the counter density, when you think about it for, a, for an operational level game like this, the counter density is really not that bad. So there's a lot of positives with the with the comp with the components. And I like the artwork. It's it's typical um, World at War level artwork. You know, the counters are nice. They're well presented. Some of the silhouettes are a bit samey, but, you know, th th this isn't a boxed game. So to perhaps expect a magazine game with their produ production schedules and similar to have, you know, individual ship silhouettes on the reverse of the counters is probably a bit unreasonable. I can live with it being Yamato for all the Japanese ships and one of the Iowas for all of the US ships. That That's all fine. Um, Component-wise, the game works. The gameplay, I think, presents a few more challenges because, as I say, there's a lot in this game that I like or want to like. It's it's a very different approach to modelling this sort of conflict. And I believe that this this system, this um the the grid the grid map and the combat system and the sort of um um, chip draw type AI bot was first tried by by Joe Miranda. He's he's the designer of this one um, in Red Dragon Rising, which is a contemporary warfare simulation, and that's at the grand strategic level, whereas this is a bit more operational. Um, the reason I say it doesn't always feel like a good fit is that that. I had the strongest feeling as I played the game that I was really shooting for the moon, not just in terms of trying to do better than my historic counterparts, you know, Nimitz, Spruance and Halsey, but even just trying to match their achievement is very, very tough in this game. And it all boils down to really the US action points, how many actions you can carry out in a turn. Now, bearing in mind each one of these turns is a month. So, you know, four, four weeks of time in, in the real world. And once things got going, you can see there's a total of, um, there are 10 turns in total in this game. Once the thing gets going, and once the historical US campaigns got going, a lot happened quite quickly, and the US was able to build up and sustain this momentum, which, I don't know, maybe, maybe if I play the game a few more times, I'll be able to suss it, but I never felt I had the same level of mobility, and I'll call it strategic resourcing behind me. So I finished playing the short campaign game uh, shortly after uploading my previous video and, um, 
And that was only five turns long, so you complete it very quickly. Now, those of you who saw the the two parter that was my um, uh, uh, my my sort of sample of play video will remember that I was still stuck trying to take Tarawa at the end of turn one. Well, by the end of turn five, oh, sorry, I had taken neighbouring Makin which is right next to Tarawa over there. And I'd established reasonably strong bases on both islands, but I did not get any further than that. Um, the, the Japanese at Majuro were able to hold me and same sort of situation as at Tarawa, I just got bogged down in a long fight. Now, what this left me with on a first play is that Success in this game comes down to three key elements. One of them is your decision as a player. That's fair enough. That's the essence of all of these games. You, you, you need good decision making to progress. But the other two legs of this tripod, one of them is luck of the dice rolls. It's a bit iffy. And the third one is luck of the chit pull. Now, a lot of the US chits grant you extra actions, but very often it's just one. Um, and, and there's often a wasted element because if you want to do a, lo a lot of the chits you get with the allies, they give you a free action which you can use to trigger an amphibious landing. I mean, great. But sometimes you want to do more things with your covering fleets. Like one of, one of the um, victory conditions in the short campaign is that you must launch Operation Hailstone. You have to attack truck and knock out the Japanese naval units there. So that's another thing that you need to do. And if you're, if you're really struggling to take these five island locations and build bases on them within five turns, it's a very tall order. And the thing I, I, I like I, I don't like so much about it is just how luck dependent it is. You, you need to get the right chits uh, and you need to really maximise your use of those actions to, to a point where you basically need to play perfectly, I would suggest, to get anywhere. But even if you do that, the way the combat system works... I mean, it's good. I like the combat system. It's straightforward, it's easy, it makes sense. And with a few exceptions, I would say the capabilities of the different units and ships and planes are well modelled. But it can be terribly, terribly swingy. Um, as, as you would have seen in my previous two videos, the shore bombardment capabilities of the US Navy are, are basically each ship, even the most powerful, have a one in six chance of inflicting damage. So your heavy hitters are really going to be your Marines and you do not have enough of them, really. Um, plus, if they take casualties, if your divisions are weakened by losses, then their combat capability degrades. I mean, all this is beautifully modelled. I'm not I'm not criticising the, the way the combat works, but uh, but but I am in the sense that it. It sometimes feels like you don't have enough to work with. And there's also the limit where you only get that one round of combat every time you trigger an action. And if you have a strongly garrisoned Japanese island or one that, you know, has enough defences and base capacity to absorb um, even a good volley of fire. I mean, you all saw what happened to me on Tarawa we actually inflicted massive losses on the Japanese in relation to what we suffered and we still got booted off the island. So theoretically, I invaded Tarawa in October, but in game terms, it takes two months to secure the island. I, uh, it just didn't work so well for me. Um, I am going to mention at this point, uh, one of you mentioned uh, Bare Bones Wargaming uh, in, in, the, in a comment on my previous video. Thank you so much for that. I went to watch his video on this very same game system and I was curious to note that he raised a lot of the same concerns I did. Um, incident, well, no, not incidentally, quite importantly, for those of you who have not visited or don't know Bare Bones Wargaming, it is an absolutely brilliant channel. I highly recommend it. Uh, and I'm going to put a link down in the description. So, 
please uh, go and have a look at that channel. G give him a well-deserved like and a subscription because he's really, really good at what he does. Um, and I really enjoy his videos, so please do head over there. Um, but yes, check out his video on the Central Pacific campaign because I'd, I'd love to know what you think, having heard both of us out. Um, but anyway, yes, so so those things slightly undo the game for me. I, I got the feeling that there was a good system here, but it felt like it had been meant for something else and had been sort of ported into the Pacific War. And in this particular situation, it, it doesn't work. This is the really frustrating thing for me about magazine games sometimes. And again, I understand they have tight production schedules. Their, their testing um, period necessarily has to be shorter than, um, than boxed games. Um, and even those can go badly wrong sometimes. Um, but it just... Central Pacific Campaign for me feels like it's, it's a great game. There's a good game in there. But it's a little bit hidden behind all these minor complications where just a tiny little bit of tweaking um, might solve the problem. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. So my, my gripe in the previous video about having to evacuate my troops from small islands. Um, yes, that could be representative of a lot of different things, uh, logistical considerations. There is a benefit, as I'd said previously, about... Um, how if you have to withdraw your landing force, um, the Japanese don't counterattack you on small islands during their counterattack phase, which is probably a good thing. Although I say that, very often a Japanese counterattack would actually do you a favour, um, because if they launch a counterattack, you often have a greater concentration of power ashore than they do. And that would very nicely mirror the reality of the Pacific War, where where desperate Japanese units were, you know, decidedly inferior to their U.S. enemies in terms of combat power and support units would hurl themselves into these attacks, and all they would achieve would would be to speed up the demise of said island stronghold. And and even I mean, this applies to Tarawa. What what was the last message out from Betio Island? All our weapons are destroyed. Everyone is going to attempt a final charge. So, you know, the fact that the game doesn't allow that is a bit. Yeah. Um, plus, it does me a favor. I don't have to spend an action point whittling your units down. You can do it for me uh, by launching ill advised attacks. Is this starting to sound a bit like sour grapes from me? May maybe it is. Maybe it is. But. It's funny, um, I, I don't want to be totally unfair and, and bring in a game from elsewhere, but of course Joe Miranda is also the guy who designed Malaya, which is pretty much the only other game on this channel that I really had a problem with when I tried playing it. And, and although Central Pacific is a far less extreme case, I do like this game, there's just little things. Um, it feels like a game that's almost there, but just, you know, with a few tweaks here and there to how it works, it could be a really great game. Maybe give the US two action points every turn. That that would make such a difference. So two automatic action points rather than one. Um, or the option of a second one if the chip you draw doesn't give you an action. I mean, that's a very rare instance too, but... Um, you know, it, it's there. Um, something like that. Um, also, I, I would personally be tempted to do away with the rule requiring you to withdraw your landing force, because I think once you've got your toehold ashore, it just does not feel right. By all means, if you want to withdraw what are now felt to be excess forces to redeploy elsewhere, yes, I'll spend an action getting them back on their transports and heading them somewhere else. That that makes sense to my very unimaginative mind. Um, but yeah, it's just things like that. Um, the final thing, and I think this was simply again down to production schedules, there are certain bits in the game where historically things don't really work. And I think this is just little human errors in the publication. So when I was playing the Japanese half of my sample turn, 
something felt a bit wrong and I couldn't put my finger on it at the time because I was too busy trying to concentrate on what what the Japanese naval naval chip did and you know getting their fleets organized for their big grand counter-attack um, and it was Taiho I realized after I'd finished recording that video because of course the lovely Japanese carrier Taiho was not commissioned until February 1944. And the reason I put her in with the combined fleet ships was because when you turn them all over to their silhouette side, Taiho didn't have a 1944 on the reverse of the counter. I, uh, I have in fact got my little biro out and corrected this for future games. You can see where I've clumsily added 1944 to the back of the counter. So she should not have even been there. Um, and now that I scrutinise the game a bit more closely, there are a couple of units on both sides that are a bit off. Um, a couple of US ones that seem to arrive later than they should do, and a couple more Japanese ones that... Well, actually, it's one other Japanese unit that's in the mix early, and another one that is um, arriving a bit late. So it's little things like that which, you know, I mean, again, it's an easy fix, but... When you buy a game and want to start playing it, you don't you don't want to be too worried about these little things. But, but I realise I've been going on for quite a bit of time and and I've kind of talked myself into circles now. So so how do I feel about this game? Well, I think on on its own merits, there is more to like about um, the Central Pacific campaign than there is to dislike. Uh, and the beauty of once you've, of the situation is once you've bought a game, you can tweak it. So, you know, see, if, see what you can do with it, see, you know, tackle the bits that you feel don't work. I will play this game again. I do want to see if I can, you know, at least get a draw or maybe beat the game in the long campaign. Um, I also want to see how the Japanese bot plays out because I've heard mixed reviews about how good an, an, an AI the Japanese um, bot is in this system. I mean, it gave me a bit of a run for my money. I mean, obviously I lost badly, only securing two islands and getting stuck on the third one by the end of turn five. Um, I was very impressed, uh, if slightly appalled as well, by that huge naval uh, counter-attack the, the bot threw in when I invaded Tarawa. And at first I thought, oh really, would the Imperial Navy do this? But, but then when I think about it, the whole Japanese concept of perimeter defence, I mean really, had the Japanese had the strength and the initiative, what happened at Tarawa should have degenerated into a, Guadal a Guadalcanal style campaign or, or something even briefer when the combined fleet rocks up. Uh, uh, so effectively the ground forces on Tarawa pin down the attacking Americans so that the cavalry can come and sweep them away. That was the Japanese defensive concept. So in a very important way, the, the bot was actually following the Japanese plan for defence. It's just it did so far more efficiently than its historical counterparts. Now, the fact that it, the fact that it, it actually ended up sacrificing a good portion of the combined fleet for no real achievement is, is in a way neither here nor there. It was doing what it was supposed to do. We just got Leyte Gulf a, a, a whole year earlier, uh, which is great for the US Navy. But I do like how this game gets around the asymmetrical nature of things in the Central Pacific campaign because it, it does beautifully model the, the difference in power in terms of what the US can bring to bear versus what the Japanese can bring to bear. Uh, and yet it doesn't make things easy for the US play. You know, as I discovered, um, in terms of relative losses, I won every battle in that that game that I ended up playing and I still lost so you know because it's all about strategic objectives at the end of the day tactical victories are nice but if they don't if they don't win you the objective then they're not doing what they're supposed to do so I really like that about this game uh, would I recommend it to people um I'll say yes 
Um, if you can find a cheap copy of this, then by all means, go for it. I'm, I'm not totally sure if I'd pay full whack. I mean, you do also get a magazine full of really nice articles, so I, it probably is worth it. Um, you may well enjoy it. You may think it's an amazing game. I'd love to hear from you if you if you either have that experience or if you already think it's a brilliant game, please do comment and tell us all why. Um, it would be, be awesome to hear um, more positivity than I've offered it. But on the whole, I'll, I'll say it's not a great game, but it's not a terrible game either. And perhaps this opinion is one that I will revise after further plays, but I will leave that one with you because I really have gone on long enough. Um, so as always, thank you very much for your company and um, it's always really great to see you guys. And um, to all my long suffering veterans, a massive wave and a hello. Thank you so much for sticking with the channel. Um, always splendid to see you and always splendid to hear from you. As ever, I will try and reply to comments as quickly as I can. And to anyone who might be new to my channel, um, you're more than welcome. If you came here looking for uh, info on Central Pacific Campaign, then I hope these videos have been interesting and useful to you. Um, if you're here for wargaming in general, please check out all the other videos I've done. I hope you find more to enjoy. Um, and lastly, it would be very remiss of me to not thank um, Barebones Wargaming for, for his really, really interesting coverage um, of this game. Again, do check out his channel, um, not just to see what he says about that game, but also all of his others. He, he covers games beautifully and you really should go and take a look. So thank you, sir. Your input uh, was ever uh, was very interesting. I only wish I'd watched your video earlier on in my own little journey, but uh, but it was good to have it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and to the rest of you, do take care. Thank you all again. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye.